Okay, C. Lindelof videos, AP Calculus, evaluate the definite integral by the limit definition. We're going to use the uh, Riemann sum definition, which is here. I mean, it's incomplete, but this is the form I'm, I'm going from. And the first thing I would say to you is that if you're taking this on a multiple choice exam, um, be a little bit careful. Look for questions like, do they say area or they, do they just ask for this because they are not always the same thing at all? And also ask yourself, what geometric shape are they giving you? So what I realize about this is that this is saying that we have y is equal to x. y is equal to x. And we have y is equal to x on negative 2 to 3. And we're asked to talk about that region. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to start gathering my pieces. I need my change of x. So change of x is b minus a over n. So I have 3 minus negative 2 over n. So we have 5 over n. Be careful of those little details because they kind of get you. I need my c sub i value, which goes here. And my c sub i value says that I want to take the beginning value, a, which happens to be negative 2, plus i times a change in x. So i times change in x. Change in x is 5 over n. So 5 is equal to that. Pretty straightforward, I think. And then I'm going to start building this. So, so far, we have some, we have our pieces, but I'm just going to put those pieces together now. And I'm going to say that it's my intention to take this summation here. So I'm going to say, I'm going to take i equals 1 to n of f of this, but f of this is just this piece, isn't it? Because wherever you had x, you're going to plug in this, right? So we have x by itself, so this goes in here by itself, 5i over n. This is our height at any given time, and this is our base. So we have height times base. We have a, we're, we're, looking at a rect, we're looking at a rectangle here, so we're taking the, the area of rectangles and adding them together. So that's what, our, that's what this intention says right here. I'm going to go ahead and multiply this thing out, and I see a lot of people don't, but I'm going to go ahead and multiply this out, and I'm going to say that what I have here is the summation is i equals 1 to n of negative 10 over n plus, oops, sorry, 25i over n squared. I'm just distributing this into here and here, right? So that gets this as one piece. From there, I'm going to just start breaking this out a little bit more so I can see it. And this is where the way I do things and the way other people do things differ. I know that I'm allowed to take these summations one at a time. So I'm going to do that. I am going to take, I'm going to factor out this 1 over n here. Can you see 1 over n? I'm going to factor out 1 over n times the summation as i equals 1 to n of, you know what, I'm going to pull this out too, this negative sign. And I'll just leave this 10 plus 25 over n, n squared times the summation, i equals 1 to n, of i. I have summation formulas for all this. So right now we're in sigma form, right? We're in sigma form, and you've already memorized all your summation formulas. So I'm going to go ahead and put these into summation formulas. So I'm transferring these into summation formulas. And if this is kind of sounding weird to you, you need to stop and go look up your summation formulas because that's the goal here. This is how we get to our answer. And I know that the summation of a constant is that constant times n. So I'm going to say one, negative 1 over n times the summation of this is 10n plus 25 over n squared times... I also know the summation of i is n times n plus 1 all over 2. So kind of getting somewhere now. This cleans up, end up with negative 10 n over n, which is just negative 10, right, plus this. If you don't mind, I'm going to switch these two pieces. I'm going to just change these two factors. They're factors anyway. I'm going to do that. I'm going to put the 2 out here and the n squared in here. It helps me a lot. So I'm going to get 25 over 2 when I, right, when I factor this in, when I distribute this, I get n squared over n plus n over n squared. Can you see it? So n squared over n is just 1. And n over n squared is 1 over n. So hopefully that makes sense to you. We're really getting close to the end here. I'm just cleaning up all this stuff so I can take a limit. I have negative 10. Plus, when I multiply this in, I get 25 over 2. 
plus 25 over 2 and I'm just distributing here and here so far so good just gonna keep messing with them just doing algebra and arithmetic here I want to add these two together they're not in common form so negative 10 is the same as negative 20 over 2 I have common denominators so I can do that so I have 5 halves plus 25 over 2 and now I'm really starting to get somewhere I'm really starting to get somewhere now so now what I want to do is now I want to take this limit so now this is where it gets a little not tricky but you have to get this form right so you want to write back to your professor that you are taking the definite integral of x dx from negative 2 to 3 and that you're saying it is equal to the limit as the number of subintervals goes to infinity, as you get lots and lots of little rectangles in there, of 5 halves plus 25 over 2n. Okay, so we're kind of done here. I just want to make sure you see this. I, I'm going to take the limit of these things one at a time. Well, the limit of 5 halves as n goes to infinity, there is no n in here, so it has no impact, so is 5 halves. The limit of 25 over 2n as n goes to infinity is 25 over an enormous number, which is 0. So the answer here is 5 halves. I did do a really, uh, take a quick second to show you this on the, um, on the calculator. So here's my look at that. So here's my 5 halves. So here's my 5 halves. This is my point here, that people tend to, sometimes tend to think that definite integral means area. Well, obviously it doesn't because this area here, this is 1, 2, 3. This is a height of 4, right? No, it's a height of 3 also, I'm sorry. So 3, 3. So we have not, uh, 3 times 3 is 9. So we have 9 halves here. 9 halves here. Well, 2.5 is not 9 halves. How come? Because it subtracted this value out. So we don't have area here. If the question is def, what's the definite integral, this is how I would answer it using the limit process. If I was asked for area, there's another little trick. It's actually very, very easy. I'm going to show it to you in another video. So I hope this was really helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Um, and if you haven't already subscribed, please do. Thanks.